How's it going? Welcome back. Thanks for coming. It's the Hotline Show, April 7th, 2024. The eclipse is tomorrow, so I'm recording a little earlier because I gotta hit the road. I'm going up there, I'm going to see it. Fingers crossed on the weather. It's not looking real good. The weather's been all over the place. It's been raining, it's been snowing, windy, cloudy, breezy. It's really wild. And because of this, decided we need a special weather correspondent. So I got one. We're going to go to him for a live report right now. Scott, what's it like out there? Thank you, Noah. I am standing here at the Tri-State Monument. This is the exact point where the states of New York, New Jersey, and Pennsylvania meet in one place. And I can tell you from this place that the weather in New York New Jersey and Pennsylvania is collectively shitty. Noah, back to you. Damn. Well, let's hope it clears up for tomorrow. I'm really hoping so. I also can't believe I spent $5,000 for that, but hoping it pays off. Like I said, this is the Hotline Show. If you don't know, call the number below, leave a message, ask a question, tell me what's on your mind. You can also record a voice memo on your phone. Just speak into your phone. Record it. Email it to me. You can find my email really easy. Also, we're doing a new thing. You can now send a video memo. Just record yourself on video. Say your question. I'll play it here if it's good. In fact, we have one, a special one. First video question. Let's go to it right now. Hey, Noah. What's up, man? This question's for Alternative Timeline, Noah. Hey, old Noah, I was wondering, I got a little extra money to invest, and what opportunities are you looking at right now? I'd really appreciate the, uh, the tips. Also, I'm here in Mexico with the fam. Where do you like to take your kids? Anyway, thanks, old Noah. Oh, God. For old Noah, first question, the video. All right, I'll, I'll just call. Let me, hold on. Let me see. Yeah, no, I got this. Don't worry. And this is my kind of guy right here. All right. So for the kids, we're mostly doing St. Barth's in the winter. Sometimes we mix it up with Turks and Caicos. I mean, there's they got some good stuff for the little one. Little Noah likes some of the board games they have there. And between me and you, they got a casino at the Ritz. High stakes poker room. It's so nice. You should come with me one time. For investing. Now... Let's get this out of the way. This is not financial advice, all right? But obviously we're doing Bitcoin and we're doing Bored Apes. By the looks of things, I feel like you might already be in on this, but just in case you aren't. Now stay away from those crypto punks. That's too artsy. I bet Noah's got some of those. You know that's not going to work out. Oil and gas. I'm big on that. I'm a big Halliburton guy. Devon Energy, too. Got tons of that. My main thing, though, distressed assets. We've been buying up apartment buildings all around the Midwest. So good. Big returns there. In fact, come into the firm. I've got one of the best vulture funds in the United States right now. Noah will give you my number. Let's connect. All right, I got to go. I hate that guy. I don't have crypto punk. I wish I did. That is the cool one. Uh, anyway, let's move on. Let's do a real call. Hello, Noah. It's Peter from Germany again. Okay, no chickens for me. I have a new question for you. Do you ever feel your work has to be perfect before you let the world see it? And if so, how do you break through this feeling? And maybe related have you ever felt that you weren't true to yourself when making work? Okay, thank you. Peter, thanks for the call. If you called almost every show, we'd love to hear from you. I'm sorry to hear you're not going to get chickens, but maybe you should. You only need a couple, but not just one. Maybe three. Whoa, did you see that? The camera imperceptibly moving just a little bit up and down. We just had an earthquake. We're getting it all here right now. Perfect work. Now, I, 
I don't believe in perfection. I mean, look at this YouTube channel. It's a mess. And if I wanted to, if, if I was hoping it would be perfect, I would never release a video. And as far as a lot of my other work, same thing. I mean, I get it to a level where I'm really happy with, but there's always something. And chasing perfection is a bad idea. I know a lot of people who get held up by that and never release anything. And I think that's a problem. You can get it good enough. Sometimes it's great. Sometimes it's not that good, but we move on. Am I ever not myself when working? Yeah, sometimes I get jobs that I'm doing and I'm just there to cash a check. And I really, you know, I don't love to do that, but sometimes we have to, and it's awkward and depressing, but we do it. You know, it's not the ideal thing. We try, we're trying to get beyond that little by little over the years we have, I mean, been doing it 20 years, maybe one day, but yeah, most people have to do stuff that isn't, doesn't always feel like themselves. And I think that's okay. Thanks for the call. Next call. Hey, Noah, it's James. I was listening to your latest video and you know, at some point I, I thought the future Noah was, I mean, I don't want to say unhinged, but a little off the rails. So I Googled it, you know, I Googled Noah Kalina, Mark Zuckerberg wedding. And I realized you were actually the photographer for that. I remember seeing those photos in the news. I remember when it happened. I can't believe it was been over 10 years ago, but I'm just wondering how does one get those kind of gigs? I remember in a few videos ago, you mentioned how you knew other photographers um, and artists. And I, I know you, I know you've been around the block for a while, but I, I don't, do you have like an agent? How does the, I'm not a photographer myself, but I'm just wondering how the process works on the, the back end. Like, does someone just call you up one day and ask you to be their photographer? Does your agent, do the the legwork um yeah i would love the insight thanks bye hey james thanks for calling great question as always how does the industry work i don't even know but with this i'm friends with some of their friends some early employees who work there and just through that connection i had known mark and priscilla been around them at different events in the past so they had known me and that particular event, that wedding, was a surprise. It was actually billed as a graduation party for Priscilla. That's how everyone coming thought it was just going to be a graduation party. Nobody knew it was a wedding, so it was a secret. Now, I guess because of that, Priscilla had tried to find other ph wedding photographers but didn't want to tell them she was getting married. So everyone was busy or turned it down or whatever, and because she knew me, she just called me. I flew out the next day and I did it. Okay, I just want to expand a little bit more on the Zuckerberg wedding situation because when I was sitting down before, I didn't really get too deep into it and wanted to make it a little more clear. I'm obviously not a wedding photographer, but when Priscilla called me, she knew that and I told her that and she was like, don't worry, we actually have someone who's going to shoot the party. We just want you to shoot the picture of us right after we get married so we can take that picture and post it to Facebook immediately and announce that we got married. So that's what I did. They got married. I took this portrait. I'll put it right here. They posted it on Facebook and that was it. We did take a bunch of other really great photos together, but I'm not allowed to release those. So that's that. Continue goes to the thing where, you know, you meet people over time and that's connections is how you get hired to do things. I don't have an agent. I had one 12 years ago, a little before I broke up with the agent I had a little before that event happened. But that is something photographers do have. The really busy ones need it. But by and large, most people, I'd say like 99% of photographers working probably don't need one um, or I don't know it depends but 
most work just comes through word of mouth or calls and my name's out there and just got off the phone with my lawyer they said i need to insert something right here to break up a really awkward cut okay that's kind of how it works that's the short story for that event hope that was useful information next caller hi noah it's megan I love what you're doing. I have so many questions and unfortunately I am going to ask them all now. Sometimes I hear you express dissatisfaction, which I get, but it does raise the question, when do you feel like a work is successful and when are you satisfied? I also wonder if you think about your audience and your community differently and how does thinking about either one affect your work? And finally, because you put work out in so many different places and forms, um, do you ever imagine a perfect platform for artists? What would that look like to you? Thank you. Megan, thank you for those questions. Good questions. I think those are hard questions and maybe that's why they're good. And I don't think my answers are going to be that good. Am I ever satisfied? Yeah, maybe sometimes, not really. I think when I shoot something, sometimes I love it. And then progressively over time, I like it less. And it's funny, sometimes when I, I used to shoot for magazines or jobs or whatever, it would take so long for those jobs to come out. I'd love it. And then over time, by the time it finally came out, I hated it. And I no longer wanted to show it or be involved with it. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, this is one of those struggles where it's like, and I mean, even back to the Peter's call about perfection, I don't know, sometimes, sometimes things are just good enough and we're just always trying to get better. A lot of the times I make things and even though it's serious, I still feel like it's practice. Like I'm practicing for something. I mean, I guess that's why they call it an art practice. You're just always trying to get better and you put in the time and over over time it's supposed to get better although there might be a curve to that maybe i'll make a new one because you definitely get good and then it seems like as you get older a lot of people get worse audience i don't know i don't often think about audience i i want to have a happy audience i don't want to let people down i know a lot of people do like and appreciate what I do and that means a lot to me so it's in my head that if I do or say anything that maybe it could offend them or turn them off to what I do and I'm sure over time I've done that um, but really I mean I try to remain true to what what I am and who I am in this time and place and people are going to leave because of that that's just what it's going to be I don't often think of my audience as a community, though. I've never really even liked that. I know it's become sort of in vogue to say, build a community. I don't want to really. I don't want to be in charge of anything, but maybe I have to be. I don't know. I hope not. Uh, but I hope there is a community of people who like what I do, but we don't have to hang out together or anything. Regarding the platform, I don't know. This is one of those questions I really don't spend a lot of time thinking about what's the perfect place. I just make stuff and find a place for it. I don't want to build it. I don't want to be tasked with being in charge of such a thing. I think the internet was probably the most ideal place in the beginning. We all know that's kind of not worked out all that well over time, but it did have its moment. But ideally it is multimedia. You can videos, photos, text, audio. It's an amazing place to share and distribute work all throughout the world to have a large audience able to see your work that way. I think it is amazing. Other than that, it's like, what you know, a gallery. Like, who cares? 100 people visit a gallery on a weekend or something. It's nothing. You want, you want a big place where as many people can see your work as possible that's the internet, but you know, it's, that's hard now too, because it got too popular. We know popular things are bad and not cool. I hope that was good. Thank you for calling Megan. Call back. Next call. 
Hi Noah, this is Temo from Germany. Not related to Peter. I wanted to thank you, first of all, for your wonderful videos. Always so inspiring and fun to watch. Always looking forward to the next one. So thank you very, very much for that. Uh, second of all, I wanted to ask what do you think is the most important thing in creating a series of artwork? Because I kind of struggle with the importance or the weight of what I'm creating within a series. And I don't know, maybe it's just self-doubt or whatever, but I thought maybe you have a thought on that or a, not really a tip, but yeah, you know what I mean. Also, future Noah, could I get a what, what? Bye. Tamor, thanks for the call. Great question, tough question. What's the most important thing when creating a series? Well, this is gonna be different for everyone, obviously, but personally, I think just being passionate about the subject matter that you're trying to capture, I guess. Um, if it's exciting to you and it keeps you up at night thinking about, and I know certain projects I've done, like I can't wait to wake up the next day to go do it because I love it, I wanna do it. That's That to me is what's important. If you don't have that drive, it's just going to flounder. It's just going to end up being a burden. You don't want work to be a burden. You want it to be inspiring and you want it to be fun. So that's my take on that. I hope that helps. You probably know this. And yeah, yeah self-doubt all the time. I mean, even the things I love the most. Think about it. I'm like, why? Who cares? No one's going to care. But if you care, that's enough. Next caller. I know, it's Bill. Um, yeah, just finished watching Hotline 7, which came out on March 8th. And here it is, uh, Tuesday, April 2nd, today. Um, so I just want you to know that people are out there uh, watching everything in chronological order. That's how I prefer to do it. Um, so I'm going to ask you a question that you've probably already answered in the future. My question here is, uh, yeah, software, uh, how does that fit into your life? Um, as a, as a, as a working professional, um, well, I of course used to, um, pay for software outright or so I thought, but here we are, uh, in a, in a day where everything is a subscription model. Um, and I just want to, hear your thoughts about that. Um, it's just seems inevitable now. This is our life. Um, hey, anyways, really appreciate the channel and everything you're doing. Bill, yes, thank you. Thanks for the compliments. And yeah, uh, chronological order is a good idea. Watching in reverse chronological order might be better because, it, well, it's not better because it's going to get worse going back over time. Ideally, we're getting better going into the future. But haven't answered this question, subscriptions. Maybe we've touched on it in the past. I definitely did a whole podcast on all-consuming about subscriptions. Uh, yeah, it sucks. I mean, it's just the way, but it's the way it is now. I mean, I don't know. I probably subscribe to 20 different things now. And I think a while back I tweeted about that, saying that, and people were like, that's not even that much. People have so many more. It's really annoying for for art, for what I do, for my job, Photoshop, Capture One, big subscriptions. I mean, you know, prob I probably spend over $1,000 a year on subscriptions just for my business. Now, uh, it's the cost of doing business. So, I mean, I guess like that's just what it is and that's an expense and it's a write-off, I guess. But yeah, I mean, the only benefit I see to that is that in theory, the software is going to continue to be supported and updated over time. And I guess that's good. You know, you don't want something that you're using seriously to all of a sudden be discontinued, but I'm sure that could happen. There's a lot of free stuff out there now as alternatives. And for most normal people, I'm sure it's plenty enough. I mean, I only use like three things in Photoshop but I pay for it. Uh, yeah, I mean, 
Good luck out there. It's tough. It's tough. The subscriptions. Final Cut, though, I paid once for this $300, and I think it's free forever. Or not free, you know, there's it updates, but I don't have to pay a subscription. So I like this. Last call. Hey, Noah. It's Chris Coe, longtime watcher, second time caller. And the Reggie video that you posted in Williamsburg is awesome. That was really, really nice. I was curious if you've talked about some of your favorite buildings in Williamsburg yet. I know you've got feelings on the William Vale. And there's a new building, too, that's gone up above a savings bank near, like, the Marcy Abstop that looks like the last level in a video game that I'm supposed to break into and steal something from. Anyway, hope you're well. Hope you keep it up. Talk to you soon. Chris, thank you. Thanks for the call. Thanks for watching. Yeah, Williamsburg, William Vale, worst building in America, if not the world. Uh, I'll be back there soon, hopefully next month, or sometime in May or June. And I'm definitely going to do some stuff about Williamsburg. It's one of my favorite topics. So stay tuned for that. I'm, uh, tell me what that building is. I'm curious if I've seen it. Sounds amazing. Okay, yeah, that was a good enough answer. We got to go, man. Got to hit the road. Going to be late for the eclipse, which might be cloudy. In which case, wouldn't be surprised. I don't want to drive all the way to Maine. It's eight hours. But should I? I won't. I'm not going to. But I'll make a video about it, about what happens. We're either going to get it or we're not. If we don't get it, it's kind of on brand, I'd say. But we'll see. Okay, wrap it up. Thank you, everyone, for coming. Hotline show. If you want to get on the show, call the number below or send me a voice memo or a video message. We'll play it. Do the stuff. Like, subscribe. We'll see you next time. Probably soon. Although, maybe it'll be a couple of days. I'm going away the solar eclipse and stuff. Are we going to be able to see it, though? Stay tuned.